Hi, I'm Adam Summer. You're listening to the Yershami Talk podcast with the support of the Yeshivat Debar Yushalayim in Harnof, Jerusalem. This is Trumos, Chapter 2, Halacha 1, and the Art Scroll are on 17A1. This is Part 2 of this year. Today we're going to be getting into fig cakes, and really the sub-theme is going to be about Teme and Tahor, things that are mixed together, and if they're going to, what do you do when they're like a single entity? And so that you have part of this single entity that's Teme, part of it's that's Tahor, and it's going to be like in regards to whether you have like a grain pile or vegetables and you have them bundled up, or in this case, you're going to have fig cakes. Now, when we left off in part one of this year, the Gemara was talking about Truma Gadola and then Trumas Meiser. Trumas Meiser is going to be the next set of ties. There are a total of five ties. And the idea is about tithing something that is Tahor on behalf of something that is Tamei. And again, we left off in this conversation that uh, the Rambam is going to be saying that for for the Truma Gadola that you're not allowed to separate the, the Tahor, which is going to be the pure uh, Truma Gadola on behalf of Tame Truma Gadola, and they're going to be saying that that's a, the Rambam is going to be saying that's a Doraita requirement. Uh, the Rosh is going to be saying that it's a Durabanan requirement, but everybody agrees that you're not supposed to do it. And the end of the conversation was what about Trumas Meiser? Are you allowed to separate for Tame, for Tahor on that? Now, the Gemara is going to talk about a Brisa where you have Tanayim uh, talking about whether you're obligated to do it. In other words, can you separate from Teme for Tahor? And is that going to be a requirement to do, just like for not separating out Truma Gadola, that's Tahor for Teme or something like that. So the Brisa reads that uh, the Trumas Meiser may be separated from Tahor produce on behalf of uh, Tahor produce, and from Tamei produce on behalf of Tamei produce, and from Tahor produce on behalf of Tamei produce, but it may not be separated from Tamei produce on behalf of Tahor produce. Now, Rabbi, Rabbi Nehemia, this is the Tana, says that just as Trumas Meiser may not be separated from Tamei produce on behalf of Tahor produce, so too it may not be separated from Tamei produce on behalf of Tamei produce. Rather, you're supposed to separate Tahor produce as Trumas Meiser on behalf of Tamei produce, even if the Tahor produce will have to come from a different pile. And there's an exception to Rabbi Nehemiah's ruling, and it says, but Rabbi Nehemiah agrees with regard to Demai that you can separate Trumas Meiser, that's Tamei, on behalf of produce that is Tamei. Now, the Demai is going to be rabbinic, right? We're talking about something that has suffix as to whether the tithes were taken, because an Amar has handled it, or because this is being done in a time when the tithing is not a direct requirement at this time. So you might have a combination of both that, you know, how are you getting to buy? Well, one is that you're dealing with a time, um, you know, when when the Truma Godola is not a direct requirement, it's a Dravanon requirement that we covered in the second Demai. And the other case would be that even if it were going to be earlier in a time when it was a direct requirement, then what happens if an Amma Aris handles it? Then, then it gets into a suffix status. So everybody agrees that with regards to the Mai, this leniency is relaxed. You know, you're, you're allowed to, to be very lenient on it. And But what about when it's, uh, when it's not the Mai? What about when you're having something that's you know, Doraita, where you're going to have to have these uh, Trumas Meiser ties taken out, and this is going to be Doraita Trumas Meiser. So the idea is that this Tana is saying that you can separate Trumas Meiser, that's Tahor, on behalf of produce that's Teme, but you're not obligated to do it. So if you want to, you can separate even Trumas Meiser, that's Teme, on the other produce. And it's implying that one's obligated to separate uh Trumas Meiser, that is Tahor, on behalf of produce that's Tamei. So Rabbi Nehemiah is holding that not only is one permitted to separate Trumas Meiser, that's Tahor, on behalf of produce that's Tamei, but is actually obligated to do it. 
and you know the question is going to be like this: Does Rabbi Nehemia, this is explained by Rabbi Kanievsky, does Rabbi Nehemia's ruling apply only in a case where the tohor produce is available, or does it apply even when the tohor produce is unavailable, or does Rabbi Nehemia forbid designating tomei produce on behalf of tomei produce only when there's an option of designating tohor produce instead, or is he going to forbid designating tomei produce on behalf of tomei produce even when there's no other option? So the the question is, you know, this is of course when you're looking at the same species, and then you know what do you do with the same species when you have to make produce and to hoard produce, and maybe one of them is not available. Uh, what what's going to be? So, Rabbi Nachemi is ruling that one may not separate chumas meiser from to make produce on behalf of to make produce, and the Gemara is going to discuss if this is really going to be the case in all uh, applications. So the Gemara says, until now we heard only that Rabbi Nachemi's ruling applies to a case where one had in his produce to hoard produce of the same species as the tomei produce. And it says whether Rabbi, the Gemara says whether Rabbi Nehemiah's ruling applies to a case where one did not have in his possession to whore produce of the same species as the tomei produce, we're going to determine from the following incident. And the Gemara reads that Rabbi Hanania of Antonia went up with Rabbi Zerah to the city of Hamas Gerar, and Rabbi Hanina bought for Rabbi Zera to whore rolls. And these are probably going to be like little halas. Uh, and uh, the Rosh Cerulio is going to be saying that this is going to be a type of olives. So one way to read it is like a type of cake or olives. And the other way to look at it is going to be like uh, a type of olives. Anyway, both are going to be required for Tame and to whore. Rabbi Zera wanted to to rectify them uh, from one day to the next. In other words, he wanted to have some tohor rolls that he received today for the purpose of tithing the tomei rolls that he might get tomorrow. And in other words, that Rabbi Zara wanted to get more of these rolls the next day, and he's worried that maybe only tomei rolls would be available tomorrow. Today he has tohor rolls, but tomorrow maybe he's only going to have tomei rolls. He has tohor rolls today. Maybe tomorrow there won't be to whore rolls, so it will only be to may rolls. So he wanted to, to follow this opinion of Rabbi Nehemiah the Tana, and ba basically Rabbi Nehemiah is saying that one may not separate Shumas Meiser from to may produce on behalf of to may produce. So Rabbi Zara would be unable to separate part of the to may rolls as Shumas Meiser on the remainder. And so what he did was he set aside some of the to whore rolls that he got on that first day in order to rectify tomei rolls that he might get tomorrow. Now, it's unclear why Rabbi Zara had to separate Trumas Meiser altogether, and one is not responsible to separate Trumas Meiser from definite Tevel, and so, you know, one is merely responsible for separating Meiser Rishon and giving it to a Levi, and it's the Levi who's responsible to separate Trumas Meiser from the Meiser Rishon. But anyway, the Gemara proves from, and so the Gemara continues, and Rabbi Hanania, uh, Hanina said to Rabbi Zera, says, we don't need to be concerned about the opinion of that individual, Rabbi Nehemiah, therefore you don't need to set aside to whore rolls for tomorrow. So Rabbi Hanina is telling Rabbi Zera that there's no need to follow the stringent opinion of Rabbi Nehemiah, and since Rabbi Zera would be permitted to separate part of tomorrow's tomei rolls, if you were to get them, as Chumas Meiser on the remainder, there's no need to set aside some tohor rolls today for tomorrow. So the Gemara is proving from this incident that Rabbi Nehemiah is ruling that one may not separate Chumas Meiser from tomei produce on behalf of uh, tomei produce applies, even in the case where one does not have tohor produce in his possession. And the Gemara asks and says, now can you possibly say that Rabbi Zara had his possession to whore produce of the same species? Certainly not. So even when, you know, there's no to whore produce available, Rabbi Nehemiah's permit uh, does not apply to somebody who's going to be separating Trumas Meiser from Tomei produce. 
In other words, Rabbi Zera says Rabbi Kenievsky set aside Tahor rolls for the next day in order to comply with the opinion of Rabbi Nehemiah the Tana that one may not separate Chumas Meiser from the Tamei produce on behalf of the Tamei produce. So if Rabbi Zera had other Tahor rolls in his possession, he'd have no reason to set aside rolls that he received from Rabbi Hanina. So we see that Rabbi Nehemiah's ruling was said even in the case of one who does not have Tahor produce in his possession. In other words, you know, it didn't it didn't come to be tomorrow yet, and these rolls weren't even baked yet. So, you know, he's worried about separating this for that for something that didn't even come into existence yet. So, the so how does this apply? Well, we're going to get into the next part of the mission. Mishnah said that in truth they said. By the way, everywhere it says that in truth, that's going to be a halahala moshla sinai. And it says that the law regarding a round cake of pressed figs that became partially tamay is as follows, that one may separate truma from the tahor figs within the cake on behalf of the tamay figs within it. And the same applies to a bundle of vegetables that became partially tamay. And the same applies to a pile of produce that became partially tamay. So a pile of produce, let's say you have grain piled up. Well, that's considered like a single entity. Or if you have like a beet leaves that are bundled together, Swiss chard, right? That's what Swiss chard is, is beet leaves. And, you know, you have a bundle, and part of it became tamay, and part of it's tahor. How do you do it? Or in the case of the fig cake, well, you know, the fig cake is going to be made where it's pressed together, and fruit juice is going to hold it together. What kind of fruit juice? It's going to be the fruit juice of the fig. Now, that's going to not be one of the seven... Uh, liquids. So if this were done with water, then the whole thing would be tame. But because you have like one fig in this fig cake that became tame, and it's all being held together by the fruit juice, and the fruit juice uh, is not one of the seven liquids. So only that fig is going to be tame. The rest is going to be tahor. So they're saying that well, you can separate, you know, for this and that. Why? Because it's going to be considered like. Um, like, is it going to be considered like a single entity, or it's going to be considered like um, two different things within it? And that's that's going to be the conversation. And the Gemara explains, by the way, what does this mean, the term in truth? And Rabbi Eliezer, it's going to be the Tana, says in any place that the rabbis use the term in truth, it is a preface to a law given uh, as a hal hal emotional Sinai. In other words, it's a law that comes from Moses at Sinai. And... The Mishnah's next part that we're saying is, in truth, that it came to the law regarding the round cake of fig cakes that became partially tame. It's going to be like this. Again, by the way, the Mishnah says that you separate the truma from the tahor figs within the cake on behalf of the tame figs within it. And again, the question is, is this going to be treated like a single entity or not? And how does it work? So the Gemara is asking, since the cake is a unit, if part of it became tame, is not all of it tame. In other words, you would think that you know part of it is tame and it's a single unit, so the whole thing should be tame. And the Gemara answers that the case in the mission refers to figs bound together with fruit juice. In other words, this is a liquid that can't combine with individual figs into a unit, and therefore only that fig that is tame is going to be tame. It doesn't spread the tuma to the other cakes. It's like a standalone thing. And by the way, uh, fruit juice, just from Makshirin, uh, the Mishnah, uh, basically is talking about any liquid other than the seven liquids that can make food susceptible to tuma, to food tuma. And this Gemara, by the way, is going to be um, reflecting the opinion of Rabbi Akiva in the Mishnah in Tovul Yom 3.4. And effectively, that since this is not one of the seven liquids, only that one fig became uh, tame, and the rest of the whole cake does not. Now, if this was water, again, if you touch the one tame fig, then the whole thing becomes tame, the whole cake becomes tame. But again, that's not how it's being held together. It's being held together with one of the liquids other than the seven liquids. So this mission is teaching that one may separate chuma from tahor figs on behalf of tamay figs, but only if both sets of figs are part of the same cake. And the Gemara is going to question this teaching. Again, 
you know, there are two ways of separating truma. The more usual is to separate a portion of produce from the tevel and then to designate it as truma. And the less usual way is to first designate a portion of produce as truma and then to separate it from the tevel. And the Gemara is going to note that if you use the other way, you'll be unable to separate tahor figs as truma on behalf of the tamay figs. So the Gemara is going to be saying that is this cake not destined to be divided into two? In other words, divided and made into two parts. In other words, the usual method of separating would be first to separate the tofor figs from the cake and then designate it as truma. And if so, at the time of designation, the two sets of figs are not part of the same cake. So then how can somebody designate the tohor figs on behalf of the tamay figs? Because again, you know, this, this is playing with an idea that you're not supposed to separate tamay for tohor for truma gadola. But now you have a fig cake, right? This fig cake is now part of a single unit. So now one part of it is teme and one part of it is tahor because again it's being held together by one of the um, you know liquids that's not one of the seven liquids and so now how do you do it because what this ruling is saying is that unlike all these other cases where you can't separate teme produce for tahor produce or tahor produce for teme produce in the case of a pile of grain and another pile of grain that's next to it over here you now have a single unit, and this is within the single unit. So the, the question is that, well, if you now take off the tohor part and you're separating it now into two units, how, did you, how do you do it, right? Isn't that just falling into the same problem that we were learning about in the first part of this year? And the Gemara is going to answer this. It's going to say, interpret the Mishnah's case as referring to when he designates the tohor figs as truma while they're still attached to the cake. In other words, this is the less usual method of separation, that one first designates the tohor figs as turuma, and then he separates it from the cake. So again, there's two ways to do it. First, you're going to separate it out, and you're going to say, ah, oh, this is my, my truma, and that's going to be uh, my, my hulin over there. Okay, done. But the other way to do it, which is a little less common, is you first say, this here is my, my truma gadola, and this is my tevel. And it's all still part of the same unit, and now you've physically separated it. So now you don't have any problem. So that's going to be how you can do it, where you did, in a kosher halachic way, designate tohor figs on behalf of tamay figs. So the Mishnah stated at the same time that the law applies to a bundle of vegetables that's partially tamay. So the Mishnah teaches that one may separate truma from tohor vegetables on behalf of tamay vegetables if both sets of vegetables belong to the same bundle. And again, if you had two different bundles, you would fall into the same problem that we looked about in the first year. In other words, if I have a tamay bundle and I have a tohor bundle and they're they're right next to each other, maybe on the same table, but I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to separate this for that. Well, you know, Rambam would say you violated a biblical verse not to separate um, you know, something that's, um, you know, like a, like you, you didn't separate from the best. And that's a biblical requirement. You, you, you know, you violated the right to requirement. So the idea is that, well, if these are now part of the same unit and only one part of it is Teme and one part of it is Tahor, uh, how do you do it? Because it's all considered to be a single entity. So... The Gemara is saying that the Mishnah's leniency was stated only when the Tamei vegetables contract Tuma after they're tied in a bundle. But if they contracted Tuma as individual stalks and then were tied into the bundle, uh, in this case, the Mishnah's leniency was not stated. So, you know, they, you know the question is, you know, did they become Tamei when they were in the bundle or not? And in this case, where they became Tamei and then they put it into the bundle after, uh, then you have the tahor and tamay vegetables that they they didn't belong to the same entity, and then you you know you can't separate truma from the tahor vegetables on behalf of the tamay vegetables. So it's only when they're they're the single entity, and they became tamay while they were a single entity. But if you took produce that was both Tamei and Tahor and combined it into a single entity and then you said, oh, I want to separate uh, 
this for that within the single entity, you're not allowed to do it. It's again going to be like having two different bundles on a table and trying to separate this for that, which the Rambam says that you're not allowed to do it, Doraita. So this leniency is only applying when they are connected and one part became to May, one part's to Hor. So, and again, it's going to be the second way to, to designate it where you're you're designating it first, and then you're physically separating it after. Only in that case can you do that. So the Gemara looks at the qualification of the Mishnah's leniency that was talking about with only the tomato vegetables contracting tuma after they were tied together in a bundle. And it asks a question. It says, what is the law regarding a case in which after some of the vegetables in a bundle, it contracted tuma one untied, and then we tied the bundle? So in other words, they were all part of the bundle, and they were all single unit. Now part of it became to May, and then the bundle fell apart. The string fell apart, and then you retied it. Now what? And the Gemara doesn't resolve this question, doesn't, doesn't answer it, because they were part of it, and then they became different. They became like individual units, and then they were reconnected. So what do you do with it? The Gemara doesn't answer that. The Mishnah talks about three examples to separate truma that from tahor produce on behalf of tame produce if both sets of produce belong to the same entity. And the Gemara is asking now why why do we have to why does you know why do we have to cite more than one example? In other words, why does the Mishnah bring so many examples? It brings about the fig cakes, brings about the vegetables, and brings about the pile of grain. Why not just talk about the fig cakes? Why do you need the other examples? So the Gemara says, let the Mishnah teach in the case of a round cake of pressed figs and not teach in the bundle of vegetables and let the Mishnah teach the case of the vegetables and not teach the pile of produce. Why Why do you have to cite more than one example for this law? What's the difference? And Gemara answers, says, had the Mishnah taught the case of the round cake or the pressed figs and didn't teach the bundle of vegetables, we would have said that only from a round cake of pressed figs, which is going to be a single collective unit, can you separate truma from the tahor figs on behalf of the tame figs? But from a bundle of vegetables that's not in a single cohesive unit, one may not separate truma from the tahor produce on behalf of the tame produce. And this is evident that it's necessary to teach in the case of a bundle of vegetables. And then also, why do we need the third case? And then Gamara says, had the Mishnah taught the case of the vegetables and not the case of the pile of produce, we would have said that only from a bundle of vegetables, which is a single bunch, uh, may one separate truma from the tahor produce on behalf of the tomato produce. So, and, it's, and then the Gemara says, but from a pile of produce, which is not a single bunch, one may not separate truma from the tahor produce on behalf of the tomato produce. In other words, it's necessary to also teach in the case of a pile of produce, because what this is showing is that the nature of the fig cakes being held together is not like the nature of a bundle of vegetables wrapped together with a string. And that is not like the pile of grain bundle, you know, piled up. In other words, these three ways of, of collecting these things into a unit are all have a different nature from one another. And that, you know, you might have come up with a different law uh, for what happens if, you know, you have some tomato grain within a grain pile that's going to be also to whore. What do you do? So you wouldn't you wouldn't come up with the right answer on how to separate it. And that's why the Mishnah needs to list all three examples. Because again, the way of collecting these together in a single pile to make a single cohesive unit, the nature of it is different one from the other. So the Mishnah is going to be stating that, you know, unless, you know, they are both part of the same entity, one may not separate Chuma from to whore produce on behalf of tomato produce. And the Mishnah then states that one may not separate truma from a uh, tahor fig on, you know, a bund you know, from a, a tahor cake of figs or a bundle of vegetables or a pile of produce on behalf of a tomato cake of figs or a bundle of vegetables or, or a pile of produce. So this is going to be basically, you know, asking why are these statements necessary? And in other words, you know, we talk about when it's going to be in a single entity, fine. Now it's saying in here, what happens if you have, you know, two of these entities? You have two two fig cakes, 
and you know one is to main, one is to whore. So why does that need to be in there too? And the Gemara says, since the Mishnah taught in the second statement that if there were two round, you know, pressed fig cakes or two bundles of vegetables or two piles of produce, you know, one is to whore and one is to may, that one may not separate Chuma from the one that is to whore on behalf of the one that's to may. So what is the need then for the first statement of this Mishnah that one may not separate Chuma from to whore produce on behalf of to may produce? And, you know, that's what, you know, Rabbi Yochanan, in the name of Rabbi Yenai, de derived um, in, from the following verse where it says, and your truma shall be reckoned to you like the grain from the threshing floor and like the ripeness of your vat. So this, by the way, is Numbers 18.27. And the Gemara explains why does the Mishnah need to state this extra thing now that you have these two piles that are one next to each other and that you're not allowed to separate this from that. So the Gemara explains that Rabbi Chia bar -Ada says that the redundancy of the Mishnah teaches that when the Mishnah allows one to separate truma from tohor produce within a pile on behalf of a tomato produce within that same pile, it's referring even to a pile of chait melons or gourds. In other words, that there's a difference, says Rabbi Kanievsky, between a pile of grain and a pile of melons. And the kernels of grain are very small you can't take those out one at a time. But melons and gourds are pretty big, and you can take those out one at a time. And the Mishnah is basically saying that one might have thought that uh, a pile of grain would be considered a single entity. And maybe, you know, because you know each individual unit of these gourds is going to be bigger, that these are going to be considered, you know, each one an individual unit, and it's not a pile. And what this is trying to say is that, that, no, a pile is a pile. And no matter how big the individual unit is, a pile is a pile. That's what it's trying to teach. And that's a good, uh, good, good question. So the Gemara asks and says, uh, there were two round uh, cakes of figs, pressed figs, and one is partially to me and one is partially to four. And so each of the two cakes contained both tame and tahor figs uh, within each of the cakes. And it says, what is the law regarding separating truma from one cake on behalf of the other? In other words, can you separate truma from the tahor figs on behalf of the tame figs in the other cake? The Gemara is going to look at a symbol or question. It's going to say, well, let the law in this case be like the law in another case where it says that if in front of a person there were two piles of produce, one from which he separated part of it for, for trumos or miser, and the other part from which he separated uh, part of its truma or miser, what is the law with regard to separating truma from one pile on behalf of the other? And the students of Rabbi Chia the Great pose a question to Chia the Great, and he responded to them by quoting the verse. It says, let the fool fold his hands and eat his own flesh. In other words, the two piles can't be rectified, and neither by separating from each one on behalf of the other or from separating each one on behalf of itself. So uh, he's basically saying that, uh, that he's basically following another Tana that, that, uh, that there's no way to rectify it. And uh, the... the the Gemara quotes a different resolution in the name of Rabbi Chia. Rabbi Lazar said in the name of Rabbi Chia the Great that one may not separate truma or miser from one pile on behalf of the other. In other words, that two piles can't be rectified by separating from one on the other, but that they can from within itself, like, like the, the case of the fig cakes that we talked about in the first part of this year. So uh, basically that if you have two different piles and part of it is to may and part of it is to whor, which is a new thing, right? It's not just, oh, this pile is to may and this pile is to whor. You're not allowed to do it in that case. We learned about that in part one of the shear, but now you have a mixture, right? You have part of it is to may and part of it is to whor, and you have another pile, part of it's to may and to whor, that you're not allowed to separate this for that. But 
if it's all within the same entity and after it was collected in the same entity, part of it became Tame and part of it became Tor, you are allowed to separate it as long as you're designating that this part is going to be the, the Truma and this part is going to be the, tab, the, the Hulin, and then you physically separate it out. In that case, because it was a single unit and became Tame beforehand or after it was collected together, then you can separate it. Have a great day.